All right, we're going to talk about the FaceFX exporter for 3D Studio Max. We've installed it from the FaceFX 2010 evaluation installer. And we've got our Slade sample character that was in that install directory in the sample source folder as an FBX file. We've imported him in here. Uh, make sure you import him with the latest FBX plugins, 2011.2. And then we're going to bring up the FaceFX exporter from the utilities menu. And the first thing we're going to notice is this uh, normalized scale checkbox, which is very important if you have scale applied to your character. Uh, Slade does because of the FBX import process. And Max uses scale a little bit differently than Game Engines uh, and Ogre, for that matter. Uh, so if you're going into FaceFX Studio, uh, you're going to need to keep this box checked when you export the reference pose and bone poses. Uh, if you're trying to bring those reference pose and bone poses and animations back into Max, uh, you're going to need to have this unchecked when you export the reference pose and bone poses. Uh, because we're doing this tutorial in Max, uh, we're going to leave this unchecked, and that will let us export reference poses and bone poses and then bring them back onto the character. And so for the reference pose, which is the first step of a bones-based character, uh, we go to a frame where he's got a neutral position, and we click Export, and then we select the bones that we want face effects to control. In this case, that's all of the bones. Uh, and then for bone poses, we're going to go to a frame where he's got some sort of a pose, and we could hit click Export, and then type a bone pose name, we'll call it Open. And now we could go, let's say, to frame zero, and we could import the open bone pose if we wanted to. And we could import the reference pose back if we didn't like that. Uh, now, rather than going through and exporting all of his bone poses one at a time, uh, we can batch export them. We need to make sure they're visible in the timeline. So we will expand the timeline a bit. And we'll click Batch Export. And we're going to select this Slade Batch Export text file which is in the sample source directory of the FaceFX uh, evaluation install. And the text format is just a simple uh, text file with bone pose name, space, frame number. Um, and we've got a couple of these neutral poses in here. Uh, we don't need those, but uh, when you batch import bone poses, uh, sometimes it's good to have the, um, the reference pose key to those frames. And that's the warnings that we're going to get, that the bone poses are identical to the reference pose. That's because of those neutral poses, um, which are, which is where we define the reference pose. Now, it's also telling us that the face graph nodes were overwritten, because uh, we defined that neutral a few times, and it also overwrote that open pose. Uh, so now we have a bunch of bone poses, and those can be driven by curves. If you've got a curve in a face effects animation with the same name as a node, it will drive the node. Um, so we could create an animation, and it would have... Um, these lip synchronization curves like wide and W and the tongue curves, SHCH, PBM, open, um, capitalization matters on these, uh, and we would we would drive those bone poses. If you had a morph character, you could just go to morph target node and click batch export, and that will get all of the morph targets that are in the character into the actor. Um, if you're using Face Effect Studio, you can just open your Ogre content, and it will import those morph target nodes as well. Slade doesn't have any morph targets. So we're going to use bone poses. Uh, but now we're going to test that out. We're going to try to generate an animation and get him to drive some of those lip sync curves. So this is an evaluation uh, plugin, which is fully functional except for its ability to generate. When you generate uh, an animation, it tells you that it needs to have sp specific text. Uh, the text is, welcome to face effects. I've always wanted to say this. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. Uh, so we have a sample audio file with that text. Uh, it's in the tools folder. It's called phraselock.oga, which is an ogvorbis file. And we can generate that animation. Uh, so we'll clean the animation timeline. Uh, and that will remove all keys from the bone po from the bone the reference bones that we um, uh, that we had defined. And we can now import the animation. Now you won't see any head movements or blinks or eyebrow raises uh, because the bone poses where we've defined those, uh, we've separated them out into left and right components. So we have a blink left, a blink right bone pose, uh, and the curve that we generate is just called blink. So you'd need a simple face graph setup that links the blink node, uh, which would accept the curve to the blink left and blink right bone poses. But you will see in this animation Slade animating with just, the, just his mouth. So the lip sync uh, targets are all there. Uh, and if we had a simple face craft setup, we could create it in 
uh, Face Effect Studio Free, for example, where we could create links to the nodes. Uh, we could import a template from another character. Um, that would let us get the head uh, moving around with uh, rotation and eyebrows and blinks and head and uh, and squints. Uh, so that's a brief introduction to the uh, Face Effects plugin. Um, an important thing to note is that um, if you want to get a license to the plugin, all you're getting is the ability to unlock that generate animation uh, feature. Uh, from Face Effects Studio professional users' standpoint, uh, the plugin is fully functional because they do their analysis inside of Face Effects Studio professional. Uh, whereas the plugin users are going to use Face Effects Studio free and the plugin to define uh, for everything. Uh, if you have any questions, check out faceeffects.com for the tutorials and the forums.